Hi everyone, Jonas here with 52 Things. Recently I made a video on how to create your own light leaks, giving your videos kind of a bokeh, dreamy look. Uh, if you're into filmmaking on a low budget and you like to create your own stuff, definitely check that out. And then I got asked how to do this with photographs. So today we're gonna do just that. We're gonna take a look at some simple techniques in Photoshop, giving your photos this dreamy kind of bokeh look like this. a little bit more background to this video I often flip through magazines and I find photographs that are like holy crap how do they make that photo look that amazing and a lot of times it is in the post processing of the image that a lot of the art comes in with that said I want to say that the skill of the photographer is of course always uh, very important or the most important thing for a good photograph uh, and I'm not saying that you have to change or manipulate a photo for it to look good not at all I'm actually a bit of a purist myself when it comes to nature shots I don't like to change them too much but with that said I also like the idea of creating art uh, with some of my photos and this is a technique that is used a lot in say fashion photography and a lot of stuff that you see in magazines family photos with a four month old baby that is tired and hungry. It's not easy, it's kind of fun. So we're gonna take this photo and we're gonna turn it into this. To achieve this, I'm gonna to need to use a couple of photographs that will probably seem completely irrelevant to this video, but they're not. So in order to show you that I'm gonna use some random shots, I've actually borrowed Louise's phone and I'm gonna pick a couple of photos here that uh, I think will work for this project, like this one and maybe a couple other ones. All right, this is the photo of Luis. I will show you a quick way of adding the bokeh effect to photos and it's going to work better with some shots than others. And this is mainly to get you started with the tools in Photoshop. And once you get started, you can have some fun with the different variations of this. First, I'm picking one of the other shots I have. I'm going to start with this shot from the Natural History Museum in Paris. Awesome place. If you're ever in Paris and you're getting tired of the Eiffel Tower and all that kind of stuff, go check it out. I drag the photo over to Photoshop and then stretch it to fill the frame. The bright lights on the left here are probably going to be a bit bright for what I want to do, so I'm stretching it out a little bit more on this side. The picture doesn't have to be proportional or even in focus, so don't worry about making it look good. Notice that when I drag the photo into Photoshop, it got converted into a smart object, this little icon down here, which means that the changes or alterations we do to the layer won't affect the quality and we can always go back to the original image that we have. With the new layer highlighted, we go up to Filters and then down to Blur Gallery and pick Field Blur. This opens up a window with a couple of different sliders. We have Blur up here now set to 15 at the moment. And below we have some sliders with bokeh. And we're going to start by blurring out the image quite a lot. So I'm dragging the slider up. And then to create the bokeh look, we use the bokeh light slider. Everything that was bright in the image is now going to kind of appear as bokeh circles. And to make them not super bright, we play with the light range sliders and close the gap between the gray and the white. So by moving them together, almost on top of each other, I think we get a much better effect. When you feel that you have the look that you want, just hit OK and have patience. This process takes a bit of time. The new adjustments appear as a smart filter that we can uncheck if we like. Now double click the layer, not the filter, and go up to blend modes pick screen and everything that is dark in the image will disappear and what we're left with are all the bright bokeh spots. To contrast this even more we can add an adjustment layer to the picture. I'm choosing levels and right click the adjustment layer and choose create clipping mask and this will make the adjustment layer only affect the layer directly under it as opposed to all of the layers under it. In the levels window, I drag the dark and white closer together. This will decrease the distance between the dark and the bright, which will make the blending more distinct. Looks pretty good, except for a couple of bright spots covering Louise's face, but I will fix those later. First, I will do the same procedure with a second photo. 
This time it's a shot of a rattlesnake Rob and I filmed last year. Drag it over, make it fit the frame, and then go to Effects, Blur Gallery, and Field Blur. And just like before, play with the blur, and then the light bokeh, and light range sliders to create that nice bokeh layer. And then bring it back to your project. We'll do the same thing again, double click the layer, change the blend mode to screen, and because it's so bright, I am going to drop the opacity of the whole layer a little bit. And I'm going to add a different adjustment layer to this layer as well. I'm going to add hue saturation, just to change the saturation of the colors slightly. And click the little eye icon here to see the before and after. Pretty big difference. Now it's time to get rid of the stuff covering up Luis's face. And to do that, I am adding a layer mask down here. Layer masks are cool, they allow us to use the brush tool to erase part of the layer but also allowing us to get anything that we have erased back. So the brush doesn't actually work as a brush anymore, it's more like an eraser. Just alternate between the foreground and background colors. Having the background selected, I can paint away the parts of the layer that I don't want and switching to foreground I can actually paint it back. I suggest using a soft brush and dropping the opacity and flow to 50 or less just to make it softer. And if you mess up, like I said, just switch back to foreground color and paint over it and you'll get back what you took away. And I'm going to do the same thing with the second layer. Add a new layer mask, brush tool to remove unwanted areas and bright spots. And how much you want to take away? All about personal preference. And now the whole process again, one last time with the shot of Evelyn screaming in the shop. Love this shot. Let's speed this one up. You know this by now. You may have noticed that all of the shots I've used have been pretty dark with only small lighter spots. I feel that too much bright areas or white sections in the shot makes it harder, I think. The bokeh circles become too big and bright, so you just have to play around with what you have. And you can do this with pretty much any photo. Doesn't have to look good, doesn't have to be in focus. So you can take all those crappy shots that you thought you were never going to use and you can create these cool bokeh effects. And here is the final photo. Okay, so we're back to where we started. I hope you enjoy that. Don't come at me now saying that I've changed this photograph too much uh, and that it's not the original anymore. I know that. I just wanted to show you some cool techniques in Photoshop on how you can change your photos up, adding these cool effects that are super popular in magazines, fashion photography, all kinds of different stuff. I want to thank all of our patrons for supporting this channel. Without your help, we would not be able to do this. So thanks for that. And Thanks everyone else for watching and see you in another video coming out next week.